There, there. See her? Yeah, look at that. She's excavating, which means she's ready. This we do up here, but probably not. She may just be guarding a nest. But the way that this male is paired up with her, uh -huh. she's probably still got some eggs. Once the female drops her eggs, will she just die? No, they are. They will live for another week or two, okay. even after they're done. And that's what these females are doing. Okay. These three, they're guarding their reds. Ah, so they've already dropped them. They probably have already dropped them. When you see that white on the tail, uh -huh. she's pretty close to dying. You can see she's starting to develop it, but uh -huh. this female here is clear. Yeah. And so she's probably all right. You can see that other female just chase that one off. Yeah. Once the female has built her, her nest, her red, uh -huh. and deposited her eggs, she doesn't want another female to come in and dig those up to build another red because then what will happen is her eggs will no longer be covered. They'll float up to the surface and then they're vulnerable. Oh, oh. Yeah. She she's doesn't, protecting she, them. She's protecting them. She knows that this other female has still got eggs and is going to excavate. And so she doesn't want her eggs that are buried to be exposed to present all the little fish in the ocean. So they stop eating to go through this process, then they, their body is being dissolved to uh, nourish their eggs and plus you can see I mean they they're not very <laughs> and you can see they do a lot of fighting the females will fight each other for the best gravel then the males will fight each other for the best females and so they do a lot of fighting when you'll see they'll be all scarred up especially yeah. those males with that big hook jaw big teeth uh, and they grow that extra height so that they can whip their head around better. It's like a paddle. Oh, wow. The difference between a big bladed paddle and a two by four in your right. canoe, right. the same thing with them. That's why those males get tall, so that they can hook against that water and they'll just whip their head and stick that kite out and just smack each other. This is a, this, see that big male chasing that little male? Mm -hmm. He doesn't want him anywhere near. He's, he's fighting to keep that female. Now they'll go back and join her again until she's ready to drop some more eggs. Nice big bale. See so you caught that trigger. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Where's your fishing pole? <laughs> Put a hook on. They're very camera shy. They'll <laughs> hold perfectly still right until the camera there comes up, and then.
going to catch him, yeah. Okay, come on over here. You guys, we're going to do a little video, but you can come get close. Just hold your hand out there. Now, when these females are ripe, their ovary, which is the sac that holds their eggs, has dissolved. And so as soon as they're ready, those eggs will just flow freely like that. And that's how we know that it's time to feed their eggs. We'll check them twice a week. Those look like little And girls. all of the females like Those that one, like little she'll be spawned on little Monday. Trap and we'll get her in. She probably had 12, 1300 eggs. Little well. No. And so by going like through this process, uh, in, in nature, only two or three of her 1300, 1200 eggs would survive. But as we go through this process, but as we go through this process, 60 to 70 percent of them will come back here to this trap at three inches long to be stopped. So that's why we go through the process, have this big facility, because touch your hand. Count the eggs. Wait. Volume. Volume. Yeah. So what you do is you take. They've got a little, a little tray <laughs> that's you know about a foot long, and it's a V tray. Okay. Drop it in. Those eggs are all fertilized right now. 